Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop out here in the heavenly backyard garden. And I'm with the Eon triplet, the 130 millimeter telescope uh, for tonight's capture. And I'm after that galaxy, that's faint, that, that far away galaxy faintly seen beyond the Pleiades star cluster, the Seven Sisters. And it's a challenge to get this galaxy. Now the Pleiades are about 440 light years away relatively close as astronomical distance go. The galaxy that I'll be searching for with this telescope right here is over 300 million, let me say that again, 300 million light years away. So the image I'm going to be taking tonight with this telescope here is actually the light that was emitted from that galaxy 300 million years ago. Yeah, you know, when you look up in the nighttime sky, you're looking into the greatest time machine there ever was. You're looking at the past, and it takes light time to get here. And when it gets here, we have these new instruments called telescopes, just invented back in the 1600s, relatively new on the human time scale. But uh, we can see those photons that were emitted by those uh, objects, nebulae and galaxies and star clusters, what have you, reaching our eyes with our telescope, the eyes of the sky, our telescopes. Anyway, I'm going to be looking at that faint, far, far away galaxy, perhaps from Star Wars, far, far away uh, tonight. So let's take a look. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. You know, I've had several people ask me, why do I have my telescope mounted so high? And what's the value of a ladder next to the telescope? Well, the, the ladder is so I can get to the top of the telescope to open up the lens and uh, take off the coverings and so forth. And the reason it's so high is because it's right next to my roof line. And I wanted to be able to see Polaris, uh, the North Star, so I could have the scope temporarily uh, polar align. Once I get it close to polar align, then I can fine tune it with other alignment uh, tools and software. But uh, I have it so I can see Polaris. That's why it is so high. Plus, uh, I have it on a pedestal on top of the uh, the mount itself, and that's so that the back of the telescope uh, will not bump into the legs of the scope. So that's why it's so high. Anyway, let's go upstairs and take a look at some of these images and the setup that I used for capturing the Pleiades galaxy. No, that's not right. The Pleiades star cluster and that far, far away galaxy way behind it. All right, I got everything set up in Nina and I'm ready to uh, record the images and so forth. And I did that the other night. And now let's go over into PixInsight and look at some of the data itself. And let's go uh, look at the, first of all, the image itself, the Pleiades star cluster or the Seven Sisters and so forth. And, you know, by looking at it, it's a great looking picture. You got all this nebulosity, this uh, cloud of dust uh, floating in front of these stars that are just behind it. And these stars are about 444 light years away from Earth. That's close. I didn't use the word thousands or millions, 440. Four. That's it. Uh, relatively close uh, star cluster to our neighborhood here at planet Earth. Meanwhile, somewhere far beyond, these are some distant stars here, and but somewhere way, way in the back over in here, there is a galaxy that is about, well, actually more than 300 million light years away. Can you see it? Can you see it? Let's wait. Let's take a look at, first of all, uh, the red picture. Uh, there's the red light uh, coming in from the images, the stacked images right there. And here's the green light. And here's the blue light. And then when I combine all these together, I, I get something like this as a beginning shot right there. However, I'm beginning to see what perhaps is that uh, galaxy off in the distance. So uh, let's um, zoom in on this a little bit. Now, if you look, zoom in, if you look on the right-hand side, over here, well, depending on how you have the orientation of your picture, but it kind of forms a big arrow. <laughs> you can see it like a, right like that, and you got some lines streaking in the in, that, in the nebulosity over here. There is a, a, a an asterism of stars right here that form a Y. Can you see the Y right there? And and then another star over here that forms that quadrilateral. And near that area, right above that, right there is the galaxy. Can you see it now? Let me zoom in. And 
Can you see it now? There it is. There is the galaxy. Now, as you zoom in, obviously you're losing a lot of information because it's so far away. With the uh, telescope that I was using, the Eon uh, 130 millimeter glass, I mean, that's, that's a pretty large telescope in itself, but it has a focal length of, of 930 millimeters. However, with the um, reducer on there, I, it, 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 it reduces down to about 750 millimeters. So uh, it's, it's a long shot to, to uh, get something that far away with this type of telescope. So let's look at a different scope. And this is the other scope. I wanted to get a close-up view of the Galaxy uh, UGC 2838, and I needed this bigger Celestron at f10. That gives me a very narrow field of view, and I'm able to tune in on this Galaxy. And boy, I tell you what, it worked pretty well, particularly with the Star Sense Auto Guider working with five-minute subs. I was impressed with that. Anyway, take a look at these pictures. So that's, you know, the Celestron 11 inch at F10. So that's a much tighter field of view. And uh, you can see the field of view is much smaller uh, than what I had with the, uh, the Eon uh, telescope. So let's take a look at the first image. I, I, I used a couple filters on this. I used a one shot color camera, uh, the ASI, uh, ZWO ASI 071 uh, one shot color camera. I use different filters. I use the uh, L Pro and the L Quad enhanced uh, filters. So let's take a look. First of all, with no filter whatsoever, uh, I did have this image here, and this is the uh, this is not zoomed in. This is the field of view that I get uh, with the um, Celestron. There you can see that one star there uh, that has the uh, uh, two different stars. It's a triple star system if they're all together. Uh, but uh, there's the galaxy right in that area there. All right, there's the um, view with no filter whatsoever, just uh, shooting through the, the uh, telescope itself. Here it is with the L Pro, and uh, a little bit more details perhaps in the color particularly because I'm filtering out the moonlight that was filtering and polluting the sky at the time. The moon was almost about three quarters full when I took this image here, and then I combined uh, the images um, with the L Quad, which I don't have at the moment on the screen, but the L Quad and the L Pro and the uh, um, no filter whatsoever. I came up with this image here of the galaxy. So there you can see, um, yeah, it's, it's out there far, far away, but I was able to pick it up somewhat with the 11 inch telescopes. So, you know, interesting, uh, that versus uh, this view here uh, with the, uh, uh, five inch or 130 millimeter telescope here uh, with the Pleiades. You know, this is a better shot because you see the whole nebulosity, but if you're looking for the, the actual uh, small feature over here, this galaxy right here, uh, you need to have uh, the tighter F10 field of view and a larger aperture wouldn't hurt. In this case, it's the 11 inch. Well, hopefully I spurred some interest for you to perhaps search for that galaxy beyond the Pleiades star cluster. Look for that big Y of stars, that three stars that form the Y, and to the right of that Y is another star. It forms kind of like a quadrilateral, and right next to that is that galaxy. You have to really look for it uh, when you're looking at the full view of the Pleiades. Now, if you want to zoom in on it, you're going to have to have a shorter uh, 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 focal ratio of your telescope. The focal length of this telescope with the, uh, with the reducer on is 5.6. Now the Celestron is 10, F10, so it's a much smaller field of view. But at F10, I can see the galaxy, but I can't see the Pleiades star cluster. So it's a trade-off, uh, a far a wide view or a close-up view, uh, the choice is yours. And I'm lucky enough where I have the two telescopes where I can look at both of them basically at the same time at least during the same night, running two rigs at the same time. That's what I did. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope you got some value out of this and uh, the excitement of capturing this galaxy uh, or anything up in the nighttime sky. You got to wonder what, you know, all that creation above us uh, that's available, and it's all in a sky near you. So unless you need rain, clear skies, everyone.
galaxy, but I can't see the Pleiades. Uh, so it's a trade-off. But if you have the two systems, that helps a lot. You, uh, you know, three stars that form the Y, and to the right of that Y, uh, there's another star that forms almost a, a, a quadrilateral. Quadrilateral? And to the right of those, and to the right of that Y is another star, almost forms a quadri quadra. Let's zoom back out again, see if I can find the Y. Uh, I think I'm turned sideways here. Um, where is the Y? I lost my Y. Oh yeah, here's the Y right here. No, that's not it either. <laughs>